Hello, everybody who has chosen to watch this YouTube video. Um, I just need to say, I, I want to say before anything begins. Uh, to you watching, whenever the last time I saw you was, if that was today, this morning, right? It, it, two hours ago, or five days ago, four days ago, three days, a year, two years, whatever, if I've never met you, I, well, maybe not that last part, maybe not if I've never met you, but all the other uh, descriptions of people. Um, you are just, like, super cool. I just, that's all. I don't know really what else to say. I just appreciate you so much, uh, all of you, and for so many different reasons, you know, and just, uh, <clears throat> I appreciate you almost almost as much as i appreciate the smell of an old book it's it's a tough thing to be that's a great smell so um anyways i could you know sit here and talk at you about nothing to no end all day uh or night i guess but i'm not gonna do that gonna try and get this one a little more straightforward into the story just because um I just have to give a couple of big shouts out. One to Carnage. Carnage. Uh, big shout out to the Don. The Don. Uh, I have, uh, I see the Geodude card you gave me every day. It's in my car. Big fan of Geodude. Uh, Dr. Byer. Uh, Dr. B. Dr. B. It's good to see you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, any doctors that are out there watching this? Actually, to uh, uh, all the doctors watching this, thank you. If you are, um, let's see who else I want to. Uh, I mean, these are kind of the regulars. I gotta shout out the guy. I mean, uh, you know the guy. Everyone knows the guy. Uh, the kidnapper. If you are that person, you know who you are. The kidnapper. Uh, and then with a Z, add that in there. We'll throw that in there with a Z. Um. Shout out to Mr. Cool. Shout out to the Rebel. Shout out to King Charles. Um, let's see. Shout out to everyone. Uh, forever. Shout out to Forever. Shout out to Autumn Spring. Shouts out to Pizza Puff. Carson. Oh boy, who else we got? Uh, hey, I hope you finish your vegetables if you're watching. Hope to, I, I hope you finished your vegetables. All right, uh, and G-Man, G-Man. All right, big shout out to G-Man. My man, my man. Uh, hope you're doing well, G-Man. You're, you're phenomenal. You are fantastic. All right, so uh, this is, we're going to get to story time now. Thanks for listening to that little uh, three-minute, 15-second spiel. So this story is actually, it was requested by somebody who I don't know if they are ever even going to see this video, but uh, it's a great story. So we, uh, I read this. Maybe some people watching this have even read this. Uh, maybe recently. It's just it's a very good story. It's a work of sci-fi, a sci-fi science fiction story uh, by a man named Ray Bradbury who uh, has written tons of stories, uh, short stories many many novels um and he really is a, a captivating writer he's a really entertaining writer he's from the midwest he's from the midwest uh and so um, excuse me for my stuffiness I forgot to take my allergy medicine this morning so this story by ray bradbury is called dark they were and golden eyed dark they were and golden eyed so one thing here i'm gonna put on some chapstick while i'm talking so while we get into this oh my chapsticks oops don't have it <clears throat> so uh this story i don't have in a book i don't like reading on uh you know, a bright, uh, a really bright screen. So I, I printed this off of the internet. Um, <clears throat> so I have this story. It's 14 pages long. We're not going to read the whole thing today. It's going to be parts. And that will uh, also keep me making a couple more videos recently. I feel like I haven't in a while. And it's like, you know, 
I will never forget about Safari Joe's library and, uh, you know, everything that it stands for. But, um, yeah, whatever. Long story short, this is a very good story. It's going to be a couple of readings. We'll just read. I'm probably just going to read a couple pages today. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's what day is to the t Tuesday night, Tuesday night. Okay, so here we go. Dark They Were and Golden Eyed by Ray Bradbury. <clears throat> the rocket metal cooled in the meadow winds. Its lid gave a bulging pop. From its clock interior stepped a man, a woman, and three children. The other passengers whispered away across the Martian meadow, leaving the man alone among his family. The man felt his hair flutter, and the tissues of his body draw tight as if he were standing at the center of a vacuum. His wife before him seemed almost to whirl away in smoke. The children, small seeds, might at any instant be sown to all the Martian climes. The children looked up at him as people looked to the sun to tell what time of their life it is. His face was cold. What's wrong? asked his wife. Let's get back on the rocket. Go back to Earth? Yes. Listen. The wind blew as if to flake away their identities. At any moment, the Martian air might draw his soul from him. His marrow comes from a white bone. He felt submerged in a chemical that could dissolve his intellect, could dissolve his intellect and burn away his past. <clears throat> they looked at Martian hills that time had worn with a crushing pressure of years. They saw the old cities lost in their meadows, lying like children's delicate bones among the boiling lakes of grass. Chin up, Harry, said his wife. It's too late. We've come over 60 million miles. The children, with their yellow hair, hollered at the deep dome of Martian sky. <clears throat> there was no answer but the racing hiss of wind through the stiff grass. By the way, shout out to Swiss Army Matt. Uh, shout out the, to the physics major. Uh, I just think I don't think I said shout out to Sour Patch, big time. Um, and uh, shout out to Fancy. If I don't know if, but shout out to Fancy, Fancy. All right, you know who you are, Fancy. You know who you are, Fancy. You goof. All right, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> chin up, Harry said his wife. It's too late. We've come over sixty million miles. The children, with their yellow hair, hollered at the deep dome of Martian sky. There was no answer but the racing hiss of wind through the stiff grass. He picked up the luggage in his cold hand. Here we go, he said, a man standing on the edge of a sea, ready to wade in and be drowned. They walked into town on a Martian planet. They, uh, not on Earth. It's not Earth. They're not on Earth. They're on a different planet. <clears throat> Their name was Bittering. Harry and his wife, Cora, Dan, Laura, and David. Those were the three children's names. They built a small white cottage and ate good breakfasts there, but the fear was never gone. It lay, it lay, with Mr. Bittering and Mrs. Bittering, a third unbidden partner at every midnight talk, at every dawn awakening. I feel like a salt crystal, he said in a mountain stream being washed away. We don't belong here. We're Earth people. This is Mars. It was meant for Martians. For heaven's sake, Cora, let's buy tickets for home. But she only shook her head. One day the atom bomb will fix Earth and then we'll be safe here. Safe and insane. Tick-tock, seven o'clock sang the voice clock time to get up and they did <clears throat> something made him check everything each morning warm hearth potted blood geraniums precisely as if he expected something to be amiss 
The morning paper was toast warm from the 6 a.m. Earth rocket. He broke its seal and tilted it at his breakfast place. He forced himself to be convivial. Colonial days all over again, he declared. Why, in ten years there will be a million Earthmen on Mars. Big cities, everything. They said we'd fail. Said the Martians would resent our invasion. <clears throat> but did we find any Martians? Not a living soul. Oh, we found their empty cities, but no one in them, right? A river of wind <clears throat> submerged the house when the windows ceased rattling. Mr. Bittering swallowed and looked at the children. I don't know, said David. Maybe there's there are Martians around and we don't see. Sometimes at night I think I hear him. I hear the wind. The sand hits my window. I get scared, and I see those towns way up in the mountains where the Martians lived a long time ago. And I think I see things moving around those towns, Papa. And I wonder if those Martians mind us living here. And if they won't come and do something about it. Nonsense, said Mr. Bittering, looking at the, uh, out the windows. We're clean, decent people, he looked at his children. All dead cities have some kind of ghosts in them. Memories, I mean. He stared at the hills. You see a staircase, and you wonder what Martians looked like climbing it. You see Martian paintings, and you wonder what the painter was like. You make a little ghost in your mind. A memory. It's quite natural. Imagination. He stopped. <clears throat> you haven't been prowling up in those ruins, have you? <clears throat>